Happy Wednesday, happy hunt day, Canada, and everyone across the country tuning in from coast to coast to coast. Soccer fans, we're glad to have you back. It's Adam Jenkins, Oliver Plot, Asa Raymond, and our special guest today, tuning in from England, a product of Blackburn Rovers, and representing the Canadian national team, Mr. Jason Lutweiler. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thank you for the welcoming. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Well, we're very much looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better over the next half an hour or so. How are things holding up? Where are you quarantined right now? Were you able to get back home to Switzerland or are you still in the UK right now? Uh, I'm still in the UK. Uh, when the lockdown happened, obviously everything went really quick. Um, and I think we're really, the flight went canceled very, very quick as well. And, um, you know, it was safer to stay home and, and try to avoid traveling and airports, etc. So, uh, yeah, I'm in the UK since the lockdown. and. Uh, I wasn't able to go back to, to Switzerland. Ollie, you're still in Toronto, right? You haven't gone back to the UK in the couple of days since I talked to you? Uh, no, I don't think that's allowed. Um, okay, I've got, I've got sure. to say, Jason, do, do you know someone who cuts your hair? Because it looks extremely like neat for uh, you know six <laughs> six weeks in quarantine. I'm, I'm struggling here. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to say all the barriers are closed, so uh, I just try to, to keep it you know, clean and, and everything. But yeah, I know. I, I'm... It's, it's too long for me. I'm used to have short, oh, but uh, oh, it's still it. okay. It's still okay. I can still go for a couple of months more. It's okay. it, it looks good to me. I'm, I'm struggling badly here. I need a haircut. <laughs> yeah, you yeah and Bob, 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 Bob shop will open soon, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Asa, how are you doing? We've got, this is like the third day in a row we've had you on. This is like Christmas yeah, for me. Nice. How are you doing? Nice to, to connect again, Adam. Doing all right. Yeah, the uh, the pandemic project is moving along. Uh, we're working on replacing the floor in a room so uh, ripping up carpets uh, teaching myself on youtube how to change some flooring uh it's going along slowly but we're moving <laughs> yeah we, we were talking off air are you still looking for a dog or are you focused on renos oh, now? dog is done it's all home okay. innovations now Perfect. That's that's a much it's a surprisingly a cheaper alternative to that. Very good. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that everyone is doing well. Thanks again for everyone who are who is tuning in today. We're gonna try and get to your YouTube questions as well. Throw them in the chat, or maybe the chat's over here. I think I'm mirrored. So wherever the chat is, put your chat your questions in. We'll try and get them to Jason throughout the show and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video while you're down there. And with that, let's begin the unofficial yet super relaxed interview portion of the show today. So Jason, play with Blackburn Rovers. What's going on with the team? Uh, how are they keeping you all connected? And when do you expect that you might be able to get back to some team activities together? Well, at the moment, we're, we're on a Zoom call every morning um, since Monday. So um, we are doing a small exercise for like 30 minutes uh, to try to connect with everyone. Uh, that may, we make sure everyone is, is, is ready to come back to training. Um, normally, we'll be in around 10 days time um, if it stays like this. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we'll be able to go back. Or it will be with obviously different measure. We won't be the whole team at the same time. It'll probably be like a group of four or five players um per day and and that would be a uh, for sure like this for the first couple of weeks and hopefully then it will easy up and then we'll be able to, to train as a whole team but it will take time obviously yeah jason before things uh, paused for the pandemic uh, blackburn was in 10th place on 53 points three back of the playoff spots uh you mentioned the training conversations and the zoom chats you guys are having it's the focus starting to switch a little bit more to football and getting the team focused uh, for when play does resume Yes, hopefully. Hopefully, it's, it, we're going to try to probably to, to, to get more into it once we are probably to the training ground. I think at the moment is uh, just try to make sure everyone gets fit, make sure everyone stays fit, or uh, make sure everyone is tuned on what's going on here. Um, and I think the day we are back at the training ground, we'll probably be able to focus more on um, the way we're going to play or how we're going to play because maybe some player will be injured or not fit enough, etc. We might have to yeah. adapt those things. So um, at the moment, um, we're not talking so much, but we are conscious that we're in a good position and there's nine games left and we know if, if we're doing well, we could we could get into those playoffs and, and have a good season, you know. So uh, of course, um, in our head, I think we're all conscious that we have something here to play for. Um, and obviously, I think that the, once we'll be back to the training ground, they'll be able to tell, okay, what, what's more, for, what we want to focus on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jason, going back a little bit in your career and, and um, maybe going back to the start a little bit, I'm interested to get a little bit of your backgrounds. Um, 
you obviously grew sure. up in, in in Switzerland, and I'm I'm always interested by different academies that that players play in and, and their experience there. And and you were a very good one in in FC Basel that's produced players like Xhaka, Shakiri, and and a lot of very recognizable names. Um, can you tell us a bit about your experience at, at Basel and and what that was like? Yeah, you have um, to think the time I was there, I was, uh, I got transferred with 16 years old uh, to Basel Academy. Um, it, it was the biggest club in Switzerland who won titles and cup every year. Uh, played Champions League, Europa League, uh, it's, it's a massive club in Europe. Um, so it was it was a, a great move for myself and a great experience for my career. Um, it was um, an academy that you'll be surprised actually because the building where we are were actually a disaster. There weren't any new building. It was all old building. They wanted that mentality that players is not everything given for them. And yeah. um, it has changed now, but it took them years to change it because that mentality, they wanted to be a winner mentality, but nothing is given. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's strange to think about this because you saw Basel is one of the biggest clubs. You're going to come. Everything is probably very new, everything. And it wasn't the case. So um, for, for that aspect, it was a, a great, great stuff for every young player at the academy at the time. Mm. Uh, and we we're a very successful academy and brought very good players out of this. Uh, so I believe that was probably the, the key who, who was a, a major factor in the success of those players. Yeah, Jason, just to touch on that a little bit more, uh, how did that help you develop? And do you think that uh, some of these kids that are coming through these academies uh, that uh, are very established and fresh and new, do you think that uh, they're maybe coming in a little entitled and it's harder for them to earn their stripes with the club because it's, it's so nice? Maybe, maybe. Uh, obviously, as it, things have changed now and... and and maybe it's getting, um, is, is, you think it might be easier or everything is given. So you feel, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so nice. It's everything perfect. You don't see the bad part of it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, I think at that time when I was there for myself, when I can speak at the time when it was that, that, that bad building, that bad, uh, you know, it wasn't looking as good as it should be. Um, it was, for me, it was a, a thing where it was key for the success of this club and the academy and everything. I believe it was. It was a, an idea behind it, which was which was which was right. Jason, obviously FC Basel. That's a very big vote of confidence for a young man to think. Oh my goodness, I really have a shot. So I wonder when you have a budding young athlete who's rising through the ranks. At what point, as a kid, if you can take us back to that point, do you really think to yourself and believe that this this could be my career? This is this could be what my legacy is when you're at such a young age. When does that click in for you? Well, um, I would say it was always, you know, in my head thinking I'm going to be a professional footballer. But obviously, there is a, this is the dream of every young kid. And uh, I think it gets to a point, as you said, where you say, OK, this could really happen. Uh, but I could not tell you uh, the, the trigger who happens at the time where I say, OK, this is now happening. Uh, but it has gone in progress from, from moving from my village club to go to the biggest um, club in the city. And then two years later, going to a school uh, for Swiss uh, players, which was only the best Swiss players there. And then you think, okay, this is the next step. And then from there, I went to Basel, and this is the other step. And you think, okay, I'm carrying on on what I want. Um, and as long as I had those steps, I felt, okay, I'm, I'm on the right way. Um, and uh, obviously, I never had a, a day where I said, okay, I could, I could do it now. But I thought, okay, this is, this is getting serious. Maybe when I was uh, 14 years old, I would say that was getting serious where we were to that Swiss school. Uh, which uh, which uh, you get selected, and it was only eight players selected wow. uh, in the whole part of Switzerland, the French part. And uh, that's where you think, okay, if I wanna if I wanna make it, I have to go through this, and and, and I have to do well. And I think that probably was 14 years old, I would say. Yeah, speaking of taking those steps and uh, uh, transitioning throughout your career, I want to know how you ended up playing for Canada's national team. Um, what's your connection to Canada? And after playing with the Swiss uh, youth national teams, uh, how did you make the decision to play for Canada? Well, uh, the first, um, how the connection happened is uh, the, the side of my mom is uh, Canadian. So every, every side of my mom is, is Canadian and that's how I got the, the Canadian passport. Um, now how it got into the Canadian national team, um, you go through somebody uh, from a blog in Canada, I don't know who, uh, wrote something on the internet and say, hey, there's a guy in England who would be eligible to play for Canada. And I think he has a passport for Canada. 
Um, and things like this happens. And then the national team contacted my club and say, oh, is this true that he's Canadian? And after a few meals, we had a call um, with Michael Finley. And uh, that's how I found out I was eligible to play for them. And, and, and that's how I got into it. Um, and uh, the, the reason why I chose Canada, it was because it was the right time for me um, to go and play for my, my second country, for my, my own nationality. And I think it was the, the right step for my career to go international and, and, and have the chance to, to represent Canada was, was, was huge. And that was, there was no turnaround. I was like, this is, this is the chance I, have, I want it, you know, and, yeah. and uh, that was the great stuff. Shout out to bloggers. Hey, you can make a difference. <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. This, guy, this guy was a great guy for me, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what the, the name of the blog was, but um, it was something with the, the fans or something like that. And he just put my name in there, and, and that's yeah. how we got it. So it yeah. was pretty cool. That's great. If, uh, if I remember correctly from my research about you, Jason, it was uh, Mitchell Tierney at Waking the Reds. So give a shout out to him oh, for, really? uh, for bringing you over. Yeah, <laughs> that, was the, that was the article that's great I found. Research. That's great research. Thank you. Hey, I come much. to these thank shows prepared, Jason. It's all good, nothing but good. the best for you. <laughs> good, good. Now I want to ask that's, you. That's, thanks. I, I'm going to put that on my resume that I uh, helped tie that piece together for you. Cool. Um, you obviously growing up in Switzerland, you got it's a beautiful country with a massive culture and a big sporting identity. And uh, the two of the biggest sports, from what uh, my understanding is, is hockey and football. So, based on your connections being Canadian and Swiss, when Canada plays Switzerland in a hockey game. Do you cheer for Canada because they're better? <laughs> or do you cheer for Switzerland because that's where your real roots are? Uh, it's a difficult one, but I, I have to say I will go for Canada because I probably think they will win. So I will go for the winner side. You know? <laughs> uh, I feel I feel I feel uh, Canada and I'm Swiss, so it, it's a difficult but um, I think I will go Canada pretty much sure. You know, I'm, I'm playing for Canada now and this is, uh, I'm notified to this and this is my country now and I believe this is my, my, my country now and I want to, I want the best, this is not here or any other sports and uh, I will support Canada. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's an exciting time for the soccer team in, in particular and obviously there was um, a lot of hope around the 2019 Gold Cup, which you were part of. Um, mm -hmm. Some really exciting young talent in the team, obviously Alfonso Davies and, and Jonathan David at, at the top of the list. Um, but then a bit of disappointment in that Haiti game with with the way the second half went and, and the way the tournament ended. Um, how do you kind of reflect on on that tournament and, and that experience from from your perspective? Um, it's it's a good experience, you know. I think uh, I had the chance to be two years before already in the first World Cup there, um, mm -hmm. and it was a different um, a different team, different uh, philosophy, and everything. Um, I think in the 2019 we were more prepared. We were more ready. Everything we were more into it to, to be successful. Um, obviously, there are things you know. I believe sometimes uh, catch you back. Um, Canada wasn't uh, the most successful country in football, and for us, it's all new. We have people have to understand. Fans have to understand. This is all new. When we will reach the half final or final the World Cup in, in a few years' time, it will be something new for everyone. Nobody would have um, lived that before. And this is the experience we have to work on. And, and I think the next goal cap will be more prepared. And if we are in a situation maybe like Haiti again, we, we will pass because it will be the same team or 80% of the team will be the same and say, we have lived this. We know how to go through it. And, and you know what? If we go 2 nil up, we know, hey, be careful here. This goes turn around again. Uh, and I think this is maybe the small experience bit we have missing on that goal cap in 2019, which I believe that would be a massive, um, massive, massive bonus for the next one for us. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, it's it's been a long time in this country since we've had Gold Cup success. So there's a lot of belief and faith right now in this current group of players and, and the young players especially. And that brings me to my next question for you, Jason. It comes actually from our YouTube chat from another Adam. And I'm not saying that's why I picked the question, but great name, Adam. He wants to know <laughs> what your thoughts are on Canada's young group of talent right now, especially in your position. We have a few really young goaltenders that must be exciting and giving you guys a boost right now, everyone competing for that spot. But in general, what are your thoughts on Canada's young group of talent right now? It's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant. The, the national team probably has talent that they probably never had before. Um, and the young players wants to play for Canada as well. You know, it's, a lot of them could have chosen another country. And they say, no, I'm going to play for Canada. And this is something people have to understand. This is, uh, they choose it. So they want to make, do well for, 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 for the Canada soccer. And um, I think this is uh, a big group, 
a group of young players you said well obviously we have those experienced players who you still need and I think they will we will need them and, and we need everyone to make a successful team it's never happening a young team will win a world cup but very rarely they always have that experience few players who who who, who keep that group and, and and the focus on them and but the team we have at the moment is fantastic and the the talent in, in, in the national team is, is enormous so hopefully we'll be successful with them what are your hopes? Sorry, Asa, just to, to get one more in on Canada. What are your hopes for the next maybe year or two personally? Because obviously Milan Boyan has been the number one for a long time, but then there's yourself and Max Cropo who are pushing him and, and even some younger goalkeepers beyond that as well. So what are your kind of hopes personally for the next 12 months or so? Well, for me personally, I want to play as a number one for the national team. But you have to be realistic at the same time and say, um, I'm not playing in my club. And if you don't play in your club, it's very difficult to be the number one in the country. Um, and I think this is the thing I have to focus there is a step I have to go forward is playing my club or playing the next club or whatsoever I am. And and then I have the chance to say, right, I, I want to play now for my national team. But um, I believe always there's always a, a take step by step and not burn stuff. And I think this is this is my first next step. I have to get game time again and then I'll be able to, to, to say, right, uh, I want to play for my country. Uh, but of course, yeah. Every player wants to play for the country, and, and this is the same for me. I would like to play the game. Mm-hmm. But Jason, I'm curious to know who the best player is that you've played with. Uh, mentioned uh, you, you know started your career playing with Basel, currently with Blackburn. You also played with the Canadian men's national team with Alfonso Davies. Want to know how he measures up to the rest. So who's the best player that you've played with, Jason? Uh, a bit difficult to say, but uh, for sure, Alfonso Davies is, uh, has impressed me over the few years I've been in the national team. Uh, he's fast, he's strong, he's, he has every everything a, a football player needs. Um, and I believe he'll be a great, great player. And I believe he's not on his top yet. He will get better. Mm-hmm. So um, for me, definitely him in, in, in Canada. And now in Europe, uh, I don't know. I would probably... I was impressed with Shakiri when I was very young. Yeah. He came uh, as a young player. And uh, no fear and strong. And he was so mature already for his age. Um, so yeah, I think the, these two probably uh, at that time were definitely the best player or I was most impressed with. Uh, I thought, oh, you know what, he's a good player. Um, I also had a chance to play with Casado uh, in Basel, who is now a Lazio. Um, he came when he was 17 and he was just a, a machine and he was uh, incredible in training, in games. He was just uh, unbelievable and uh, I will always remember that. What about players uh, you've gone up against? Uh, we're looking at the the team sheet before a match, uh, which one are you most prepared for as a keeper uh, that uh, I wouldn't say you fear going up against, but you're most concerned with on the other side? Uh, well, I had a chance to play a few big teams in the past. Um, I would say Drogba was a big player. I was yeah. I was scared of him. I was thinking, this guy is powerful, you know. You can like, say it. <laughs> this guy is strong, you know. He's strong. He shoots strong. His position is always with the hand where you don't want him to have. And, um, he was he was a, a biggest fear for me when I played Chelsea against Chelsea. But um, I'd probably say as well uh, we would play Man United um, and the, the lineup with Matar and Martial and you see them and you think oh my god they all look so good and and the technique and they're on a different level. Um, so you don't feel just one player you feel the whole team there and this is this is hard. Um, but uh, the best but difficult to say I think they were all on a different level. Uh, but I got impressed with Drogba. Uh, yeah. at a time when we played uh, Chelsea. Well, I think uh, that's certainly at the top of, would be the top of our list. So I think you win this unofficial game we just played right now, Jason. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> wanted to, And the only reason I say that is because Asa, Ali, and I all play on the One Soccer FC like adult rec league team. So that brings us to our next segment. We want to ask you some goaltender specific questions because we don't always have a goaltender. So sometimes we got to rotate. And that's fine. Jason, I don't know that's if you fine. can tell. I'm only five foot seven, so I need all the help I can get from you in this next segment. <laughs> sure, okay, not to put sure. pressure on. Okay, perfect. Um, when it comes to saving penalties, I'm not saying our defense commits a lot of sloppy fouls in the box, but if I'm playing goalie, what is your approach to stopping those penalties? Because it's got to be one of the most stressful things in sports when you're playing against professionals and not a banker who just happens to be playing on the other rec league team. <laughs> well, uh, Strange wise, I actually don't feel any pressure when it's a penalty because you can only win. This is a situation you can only win. I mm. actually believe penalty mm. shootout is the, the, the place where goalkeepers, um, it's probably the only situation we can only win. So if you save the penalty, you're the hero. If you don't save it, they're like, oh, no chance. It was a penalty. 
So um, I go in penalty really relaxed, but um, we obviously study penalties. So we know before every game who is going is potentially going to shoot. Uh, if he shoot, where does he shoot, etc. It give it don't say you're going to save it, but it gives you a, a bigger chance to, to do it. Um, and um, yeah, that's the the only thing we got. We got where they shoot and etc. And then we try to to save and do your best, you know. But sometimes it doesn't work. So then in, in that particular situation, this is what I always find interesting is you obviously have the preparation. You see the, the PK taker step up to the spot, put the ball down. Do you know already which way you're mm. going or are you still trying to read them or figure them out at all before you make your decision? Uh, no, generally I, I kind of know. Um, I just check his uh, back number and I say, okay, this is in, uh, in my record or in my memory. I think he's right side, the left side or middle. Uh, sometimes they are good penalty takers and they will change every day, every game. Right. So um, at that time, you just have to think, OK, uh, maybe he has had a quick look with his left uh, his eyes on the left or he had his, his run is very straightforward. So he'd be probably like, like small thing like this, you know. But um, generally now, because of every game is recorded uh, on video, so you probably have um, you probably have video of him. At least one penalty he has, he has taken in the past. How closely do you look at those tendencies, like the run up and the way he puts the ball down? Do you focus on that, or is it strictly he goes to the right every time? Uh, he has sometimes he can. Some players has uh, some tricks. So, for example, right. a, certain players I've, I've been observing, and um, they could uh, if they would, for example, shooting to the left, they will lift the left arm very early, and if they wouldn't lift the left arm, it's because okay. they would go right. And that was a trick to say, okay. You have to look. Just look at his left arm. If he goes up, you go right. If he goes, left, he doesn't go up. Just stay and see and, and wait where he goes and, and kind of stuff like that. So of course the run can change a lot. Yeah. But players are getting good at this and they're not silly and they know we are observing them. So <laughs> uh, they try to show the less as possible and and and, and getting better at this because of course we, we can watch them. So Adam, that's the tip. I eh? start recording yeah. the other teams that we play yeah. against in our set up a few cameras yeah. Pick up the producer, Ar yeah producer armin's already recording this video so we'll study this before our next season starts this is, this <laughs> is helpful stuff jason this is helpful stuff good thing you're welcome you say that uh when your mentality going in is that you can only win but having said that if a major tournament is on the line is there a tougher job in sports in your opinion than being a goalkeeper and if for PK specifically, in that moment, is that the hardest job in sports? You know what? I don't think so. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, as I said, you, you, I, I, I back myself to think, okay, over five penalties, you're probably going to get one or close to one uh, to save it. Um, and uh, if you don't, then obviously you'd be unlucky. You know? But a player running up in front of a crowd and, and – you sometimes you see that goalkeeper getting bigger and bigger while you're running to that ball. Um, the pressure, I believe, is higher for them. Mm. Uh, so that's why I think it's not the hardest job at that point on PK per, per particularly. Uh, but I would love to be in that situation. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna say let's make another interview because I was panicking that day, you know. So <laughs> we'll we'll see we'll see. But as for my experience, I think uh, PK is a good a good time to be a goalkeeper and you can you can decide to be the hero or like just by making one save and change the whole game. So, um, of course, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good point to be there. That's a very penalties, interesting take, yeah. Penalties aside, what, what kind of mentality do you need to have to be a goalkeeper? Because it feels like you, it's, it's maybe easier to be the villain as a goalkeeper by making a mistake and conceding a goal than it is to be the hero compared to, say, a striker. Yeah, of course. Um, many people have said in the past, and many goalkeepers said in the past, you 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 save ten goal or ten balls, and you're doing well, but you left one in, yeah. which doesn't look good, yeah. and they will judge you on that one in, and you're saying, but what about ten others? And this is the sadness <laughs> about it, you know. It, yeah. it is sad when you think about it because you're saying, hang on, I've done great till then, and then you judge me on one ball. Uh, but this is the job, and this is how we unjudge it, and uh, I believe it's all is is where goalkeepers get judged onto it. So how many mistakes you make in a season, how many mistakes you make over two seasons. Uh, and the uh, less you have, bigger chance you get a better club. And uh, this is the, the consistency of goalkeepers um, quality who will bring them. Uh, that's what the difference is, I think, between the Premier League and, and Championship and League One. Is the, 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 pure, the goalkeeper, how he plays, the fewer the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Well, we've, we've completely blown my mind because I thought for sure the goalkeeper was going to say, if it's the World Cup final and I'm the goalkeeper, this is the toughest job in sports. But I'm not going to stop, Jason, until I get the answer that I'm looking for. So if you no don't problem. think it is a goalkeeper, and I'm going to open this up to Ollie and Ace as well, what do you think is the toughest job in sports? Is it the striker taking the PK? Is it a completely different sport? What do you think is the toughest job in sports? So because he's not PK, then he's goalkeeper. <laughs> okay, okay, I see. It is. It Every is, other it part is. of the game, yeah. It is, right. it is, it is, it is. It is. Goalkeeper is the hardest job, uh, personally. I think it is the hardest job. You, your concentration must be 120%, cannot be 99 Um, You have to be, it's more a mental game than a physical game, you know. Um, But it is the hardest. You cannot miss a pass, you cannot miss a kick, you cannot miss, this. the mistake is zero. Yeah. And, and uh, I think they are players on the field that don't realize sometimes is that we can just not have one mistake um, because it's a goal and, uh, and the strikers or defenders or whatsoever, they, they know if they miss the pass, there is always a defender recovering or somebody recovering. There's a goalkeeper in the worst case scenario. There's always something. Uh, by us, there's nothing. It's just the net. So uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I would say this is the hardest job in football. Asa, do you agree? Yeah. I'm with the same line of thinking. Uh, I agree to a point, but when you're talking about the toughest job in sports, um, I'd have to go with a, a boxer or an MMA fighter because there's nobody of else. Of course, of and course. I'm talking same football. Sort of thing. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. football here. I'm talking yeah. football. Uh, I wouldn't go in an MMA fight either. Uh, there you go. This, is, this is another level. No, this is definitely the toughest. Boxers or everything. That's... You have to be crazy to go there. But uh, yeah, I agree. Toughest in football, goalkeeper. In the world, there is something yeah. else. Yeah. Anything violent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no. No. I'm not a violent guy, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that that route. He's a lover, not a fighter. Ollie, what do you think is the toughest job in sports? Um, I think I'd go along the same lines as Jason. I think the ones where you have to be totally focused for the entire game, and one mistake could really be costly. So yeah, yeah I, that's I look boxing. At, well, yeah, boxing <laughs> is is one. It is, at, it is, it yeah. is, it is, it is. Yeah, it well, is you're boxing. The, if you lose your concentration for one second, you knock down. And you're it's, on the floor, it's very right? Similar. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's very so, similar. So yeah, I'd, I'd look at goalkeeper as one quarterback in football. You know, you throw one bad pass and 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 you're in trouble. Um, mm-hmm. Even a pitcher in baseball, you know, one bad yeah. ball, uh, one bad pitch, and it's it's out of the park, right? So the, mm-hmm. those kinds of jobs where you just cannot afford to make a mistake, I, I would say, are the toughest. Yeah, I, I generally agree. The only place that I would pivot and take it a bit differently is I was thinking uh, like an ultra marathon runner or people who do like yeah. marathons in the yeah. mountains. Just like I, I struggle doing like a 3K run in high school and I thought I was fit. I don't know how they're doing hundreds of kilometers up a mountain, down a mountain. Yeah. That's got to be incredibly painful on your body and mentally as well. But I think we covered them all. Um, we do this next one quickly. It's the opposite question, Jason, and I'll start with you. What do you think? Who do you think has the easiest job in sports? First thing that comes to your mind. I don't have one. I, I wouldn't be <laughs> able to tell you one. Um, you know, I've, um, I've read something about bobsleigh, uh, the guys in the middle of the bobsleigh, they don't do anything, <laughs> those good. kind of stuff um is not true I, I believe they will have a part in it you know and as i think everyone who is involved in the team doesn't matter what's your position uh it's as much important than anyone else um there's no easy job i would say i, I am i've been number two for three years now in Blackburn, and uh, trust me this is not an easy job at all uh, yeah. even if people yeah. think oh yeah he's on the bench or block he's it's really hard you have to be there and, and just wait for something happening and this is non-stop you know and uh, it's, it's a hard job so for everyone to know, it is hard for any position you are in any sport. Um, yeah. As long as you're there, it's, it is a hard position. But Jason, what about this one? As a keeper, a, a punter in American football, you catch the ball and then you kick it as far as you can and then you leave the field. Yeah, but you see, he has to kick well. <laughs> yeah. He has to kick well. I think that's in the job description, yes. <laughs> yeah, he has to kick well. If he doesn't kick well, he's not there. He's not. He's going to be, you know, he doesn't have that job. So he still has something to do well, you know. Um, sure. So I think, exactly. I think that everyone has a part, even if it's five seconds. I think they still have to be very good at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, pro I'm athletes gonna... sticking up for pro athletes here. Yeah. I see what it is. Exactly. I see how it is, exactly. Jason. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go to baseball on this one. I didn't know until I was doing some Googling that this really was a full-time job, but it is, and it pays about $100,000 a year, which is not bad money. Um, the bullpen catcher. Yep. 
He he just stays in the bullpen and warms up the relief pitchers. Never actually has to go into the game uh, and is paid pretty handsomely for it. So I, I would say that would be my easiest job in professional sports. That's a good show. The, like literally, <laughs> your your hazard on the job is just being crouched all day, and yeah, usually they're yeah, former yeah. catchers, so they already have the money. They just love the game. That's not a bad show, though. <laughs> I think I'm not going to try and beat that one. It's like having a season tickets and then yeah. you never play and there you get points. It's and you get to sit in, the, sit in the bullpen. That's great. <laughs> exactly. um, okay, Jason, that's going to be all the questions for us. But before we go, we have one final one from the chat. Sure. And this question asks, how familiar are you with the Canadian Premier League? And would you ever consider finishing your career or making a professional stop in Canada before you retired? Uh, familiar with uh, CPL, uh, I know a few teams because we have a few uh, national team players who plays in the CPL, uh, and I know a lot of them who are playing at the moment uh, on it, who I've played with, or etc. Uh, and would I consider? Yeah, I would definitely consider to play in Canada one day, uh, or in MLS or in the CPL. Um, but of course, uh, offers has to come, and uh, and it has to be the right time, the right city. Everything has to to match at the same time. But uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I would never say no. It's, it's, it's a country I love, and you know, uh, every time I go there, I feel home. So, uh, of course, I, I would. That's fantastic stuff. Yeah. And I hope the country throughout this episode got to know you a little bit better. And they finally Thank got you. the answer. Mitchell Tierney, the blogger, got you found out you had a passport, and now you're representing Canada in one of the most exciting and epic parts of its history and hopefully you have a long and successful career both in england thank with you. blackburn and wherever you end up jason thank you so much merci danke schön i think i got all three of your languages <laughs> there we appreciate yeah, you being on, you. buddy all the best thank you guys thank you Brian. thank you very much thanks jason. Asa, ollie producer kyle and armin i'm adam jenkins we'll talk to you on the one soccer hangout very very soon